Hey guys, it's Paul, George Paul Smith, GPS, whatever you want to call me. Um, I want to address a friend of mine, Billy, and his situation where he had, like me, a right-sided stroke, which affects, of course, the left side of your body. So what I'm going to be addressing today is everything from not being able to use this hand at all, all the way through exercises that can get your left hand working again. I was very lucky in my uh, experience in getting my hands working again, doing these things that I want to share with you. Okay, so I learned how to play guitar in a linear way. So when I say that, what I mean is I, I started learning scales when I was a kid and played them often but I started playing scales more in a linear way. So, you know, I want to focus a little bit more on that, especially with uh, utilizing the left hand. Okay, so one thing that I would tell everybody to do, is, and I've been teaching guitar since I was 19, I've been playing professionally since my early 20s, and the stroke for me happened when I was 43, and that was nine years ago, so what is the math there? 50. Well, so I'm in my 50, I'm 53, so I'm in my 10th year, so I guess in February of this coming year will be my 10-year stroke anniversary. Okay, anyway, so one thing that I would suggest you do, especially you, Billy, okay, if you have any movement at all with your uh, left hand, Try to map out exercises with this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And to kind of do like a one, three, two, four kind of thing. So how that looks on a guitar would be. Okay, so those kinds of things aren't very musical, but those are very helpful things. And as we looked at our guitar and our neck as a, an escape, and an artistic palette in the past, that's not how we can look at it anymore because things have happened to us. So we need to look at this as a gymnasium. Okay, so just to be on the same page with everybody, uh, my guitar is tuned standard uh, for the first half of this. When I switch to a red guitar, that will be tuned to open G tuning. And that's really fun. And I highly recommend that too. So hang tight with me for another minute or so. Uh, doing some exercises, then I'm going to switch to the red guitar, the open G guitar. All right, so this concept of linear playing, first of all, let's let's take a look at our D string tuned standard, G and B string all tuned standard. So what we have here is a very lazy man's G chord. Right? Okay. Alright, so just remember this, if you only have one finger that works, just always know, if you have one finger that works, remember that if you can play a G, of course that's a G sharp, A, A sharp, E, okay? I was so desperate at first that I started tuning my B string down a half strip in order to get minor sounds, because this, of course, would be an A major, uh, so the B string, B, um, you see this B, C, C sharp, so that would be a major third. Right. Anyway, okay, so we have an A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, B. All right, so utilizing that concept if you know that you have an E major there you have a D major there you have a G major here you have an A major there that's all kinds of songs just to get you playing because we're trying to build our uh, neurological pathways and playing any kind of music even if it's a Anything like that's cool, and you should do that for sure. Matter of fact, this would be the first exercise. I would say E major, uh, D major, 
G major, A major, all right? So play that around and start thinking about Van Halen, start thinking little guitars. Just that kind of phraseology. So I'm picking all of those strings at once, right? All right, so that's really going to be helpful for you. The last thing that I would say would be with one finger, play a scale. Play um, an E natural minor scale. All right, those are things that are going to help build your other fingers so that you can start playing that scale in other places. Okay, so it's very important that you start getting just one finger involved in uh, your playing. So the, the next thing I'm gonna do is going to be for people that don't have the luxury of having one finger available. And directly after my stroke, I did not have one finger available. Matter of fact, I can remember sitting talking to somebody with my arm down like this on my knee. And when I would stand up, the arm would just go straight down. It just really didn't have any sort of, uh, it was tough. I mean, I was, I was completely paralyzed. My whole, literally my whole left side of my body was paralyzed. So walking and all of that was really tough. Not to mention talking. All right, so. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at a couple of things in the key of G. All right, so to do that, I have my strings tuned this way. Uh, D, G, D, G, B, D. Okay? So you can look that up if you don't know that tuning. Keith Richards does a lot of tuning that way. Lots of stones, hits that you've heard have him playing in this tuning. He does remove the low E string though, but I like having it on there. It's useful to me. So, uh, what song is that? Honky Tonk Woman. So basically Honky Tonk Woman is. Right, so it's basically that. So literally that's just a G. It's kind of like the principle of what I was showing you earlier. And that's really linear in the sense that, really, you can play scales uh, with a guitar tune this way, but the interesting thing is, right? So you have lots of pull-offs, lots of cool things you can do. And that was huge for me. Again, that's a one finger thing. But there are some of us that don't have that yet. We don't have anything going on with our left hand. So in the worst case scenario, which is where I started, this is what I had to do, literally. All right, so I would take my guitar and I wasn't super comfortable holding it this way. I mean, my hand wasn't even doing anything. I was, I was literally giving guitar lessons with my hand not even, my left hand not even touching the damn guitar. It was awful. So what I ended up doing was putting the guitar on my lap, literally, like this. And I had all of the access in the world that I needed to the fretboard, but my, my hand that at the time was uh, well, it wasn't dead. It was sleeping or whatever you want to call it. Spasticity just wouldn't allow it to do anything. So I started playing this way, right? So I started doing that kind of stuff. And what I ended up doing to force myself to keep in time was... All right, so I had a delay set, and so I would have it set for an immediate slap back. So basically, it would be like, if I had a delay on my voice, it would be like, check, check, check. So it would be check, check. So it's, it's, it's just giving you one more of what you just played. 
All right, so I started, of course, playing scales that way. And this really helped me, and it helped me build my timing back. Okay, so I'm playing a E pentatonic minor scale there, and I'm just... And so I really want you to practice that. I think that is a great thing to do, especially if your guitar is tuned to a chord, because you can do things like this. And that's really just an E major, okay? So I'm playing an E major chord. But I want to challenge my brain as much as I want to challenge my, uh, the physical aspects of me striking those notes. So I'm forcing my brain to understand uh, how to play in time with that delay. Because some things that we have that are obvious to us, like talking and communicating, well, after a stroke, we can't do some of the obvious things that we used to be able to do. And playing in time with delay is one of those things that I think everybody needs to practice. All right, so again, I have the setting for uh, delay, delay, right? And it just stops there, all right? So I have just one slap back, all right? You get the idea? You see what I'm doing? So I have to play notes in between, so. Okay, so I hope that helps you, and I want you to practice that often. And if you have any questions about this video or any comments for me, please reach out, let me know your story, and I'll do the best I can.